We are going to be talking about the Loa Dumbala. Now, Dumbala is a Loa I didn't know too much about. I just knew that he was like essentially the highest of the high of the Loa and that he was the Loa of wisdom, wealth, and overall life. So, Dumbala is actually a snake, a big white snake, like huge, like he has 7,000 coils and he actually doesn't speak any language. He actually Hisses. Remember in my previous video, I said that um, Papa Legba can speak all languages. Well, Dumbala literally does not communicate well and it's to the point where even Papa Legba can't even interpret what he says. So if he comes to you, it will most likely be in a dream and he will be hissing or trying to give you signs and you definitely won't be able to really articulate what he's saying. You have to really be very vigilant and very understanding of what information he's trying to convey to you. But it's also believed that the only reason people don't really understand what he says is because he's so wise and he's of a different time that it's interpreted to us as a hiss if he comes to you. Um, he also is known for coming to people in dreams particularly and he really isn't called upon unless it's something like extremely serious because like I said, he's like literally the highest of the high. He can be found in the Haitian voodoo religion, which is what we are discussing today, as well as New Orleans voodoo as Blanc Dani. And of course he is found in the Daomi voodoo as well. And he has different purposes kind of in each voodoo religion. But yeah, like I said, this is about Haitian voodoo. So that's what we will be talking about. He is the primordial or the God Loa. Now understand in the Haitian voodoo and I believe most voodoo religions, they believe in God. Okay, I need to tell you this right now. They believe in God and they call him Bon Dieu. Well, in Haitian voodoo, they call him Bon Dieu. When it comes to Dumbala, Dumbala is literally the oldest, the wisest, most prevalent. He is said to have helped God create the world. Now understand, again, he is not a God per se, but he is really held to a very high standard because he did help God build the world. And understand, like I said, they do believe in the one God, which is Bon Dieu, okay? Because I know people are gonna mix and match whatever the fuck they wanted to hear, okay? Now, the Mbala helps create a sustained energy and persistent life force. Now, the Mbala is a member of the Radalwa family. I went over that in my previous videos. You guys can go check them out. There is the Gede Loa, the Rada Loa, and the Petrol Loa. The Petrol are like calm, pretty cool, really old, really chill. Petrol are usually pretty all over the place, really like crazy, off the wall type of Loa. And then the Gede are seen to be like people that are essentially ancestors that could have been here in a past life or whatever. Um, they're kind of like a newer family of Loa. I don't think I've covered any Gede Loas actually. They're like the newer type of Loa. So Dumbala lives in the sky and he encircles the world with his 7,000 coils. He constantly sheds his skin, which provides the earth with all of its waters. He's actually believed to be the first and only Loa at one point, like it was literally just him. He was said to be laying under the earth for like ever. He was just laying there chilling. And then one day he got up and he shook the world up and literally him moving created the mountains, the sky, the sea. It's how he met his wife, Aido, or Aida Wedo. I think it's Aida. I've always heard Aida. I've never heard of Aido, but I feel like the proper or in the Daomi voodoo religion would be Aido. If I'm not saying right, I'm very sorry, but I'm just gonna say Aida because that's how I've always heard of it. Aida is essentially the Loa of rainbows. Anyhow, they fell in love and their love empowers the entire world. And this power that they hold is manifested in human beings with the power of milk and semen. 
the sound grows, but I mean, yeah, that's where that comes from. And what's very interesting is they're very much still in love today. That is his wife, but you know, he got a side piece. Can y'all guess who the side piece is? Can y'all guess? Because when I read this, I was like, I'm not shocked. And I did mention Dumbala in the video that I made about her. It's really Frida. Yes, Ursuli Frida is his like little side thing or whatever, but he still is madly in love with Aida, but genuinely just enjoys Ursuli Frida's presence. I believe Ursuli definitely does like consider him like one of her husbands of some sort. Nonetheless, yeah, we're not even about to get into that. That would be an interesting video. Like analyzing the wives and the side pieces, a lot going on over there. It's, it's oh my God, it's a lot. Now, Aida, like I said, is his wife. She is heavily always associated with Dumbala. That is because in the voodoo religion, they believe everything is created between man and a woman. Each part is equally shared between the two. They even have combined shrines. I believe a lot of people have like combined their shrines together and you know, depict them together most of the time. Now, Dumbala is literally one of the most respected, next to Papa Legba, I believe, Papa Legba is also very, very respected, but Dumbala is even higher than that. He is literally the most beloved, bringing those who serve him lots of prosperity, wealth, good health, fertility, and he can also lead you to the direction of missing treasure, y'all. Let me call on him to find some gold, you feel me? He's like, nah, you're gonna be like, yeah, so with Dumbala, you can't call on him for anything frivolous. He's not about to just come to you for absolutely no reason, and he's not gonna come to you if he doesn't think whatever you need is important. And if he does come and he realizes what you need is not important, yeah, just know that it's not gonna be, it's not gonna look too too good for you at all. Dumbala is often synchronized with Moses and St. Patrick. He is actually usually associated with being the staff of Moses. Y'all know when he like, you know Moses always walked around with the staff, so allegedly the snake was the staff, the staff was the snake, which was Dumbala. Although he lives in the sky, he can be found in rivers, streams, lakes, ponds, and he is very wise. Like I said, so wise that you may not even understand what he's saying to you or understand his signals and signs if he does decide to contact you. He is the reason of all wisdom on earth. And he is said to be very intelligent due to his connection of the past, present, and future. He is also very heavily connected with the connection between you and your ancestors. Now, like I said, he is incredibly old and incredibly like fragile, like he's real, real old. Like you know them grown ones that like be so old that you just like, oh, he just wanna pinch their cheeks, but you can't because like they're so old and you don't wanna, that's like Dumbala. Like that's why people don't really like to bother him because it's like, if it's trivial, it's just like, he don't got that energy for that shit. You have to be genuinely desperate or in trouble to reach out to him. I mean, even though he's pretty old, he's a very, very nice loi, to be completely honest. He's not like mean or evil, unless I guess you push him there, but I haven't really heard anything genuinely bad about him. You guys can comment down below if you had any experiences or know anyone who's had any experiences, but he's a pretty nice one. He's pretty chill. And he actually has a particular interest with humans, engaging in like, marriages with women and sometimes men. Now when it comes to his altar and offerings, he's a very interesting loi. So this is one of the loi that really will not take no bullshit on his altar. He likes his altar very, very clean and he only allows certain people to talk to him in terms of if you are sick, if you don't smell good, like clearly like, yo dead ass, if you're like a bum, if you were like really, really sick or whatever, like do not call him Dumbala because he will not go. And yeah, he avoids dirty and sick people like a plague. He's very particular with smells. He does not like strong or weird type of smells happening around him. All of y'all that like them bath and body work candles or whatever, mm, throw it away if you wanna try to call on Dumbala. You can't even smoke near his altar. There's no drinking near his altar, his veb, nothing like that. And um, Haitian voodoo is heavily associated with that, you know, smoking, drinking, and stuff like that. But when it comes to Dumbala, none of that. Like if there is a ceremony and Dumbala is to be called upon, everyone gotta be on their best behavior. There is no acting the fuck up when you're calling on Dumbala. If one wishes to drink or smoke during a ceremony, they must wait until he leaves the ceremony. 
or you just wasted your goddamn time. And this is because, um, like I said, he will most likely not come. I've heard that he's not too opposed to like light, light floral type of scents, but to be honest, I would definitely just not try it. Like I would just be safe than sorry. It's a cologne type of product that he actually likes, which is called Pompeii. I don't believe you can find it anywhere. I believe you can only buy it at like spiritual supply stores. But like I said, just be safe and stay away from smells, period. The voodoo temples actually have like a small pond or a little body of water in order to commemorate Zumbala. It is important to ensure that everyone that intends any type of Dumbala type of ceremony, all of his devotees are clean and healthy. The color is white and as an offering, one should keep a very shallow vessel of water that he can, you know, coil up in. Like I said, he is a snake. Also a very traditional offering is like a mound of white flour on a clean, pure white Plate. You are to put one whole white egg in the flour and you know, leave it out, serve. Other offerings include chicken, eggs, white candles, other white food, white flowers, rice, milk. Um, for more lavish, more like expensive things, he loves a porcelain egg, luxurious white fabrics, or you know, white snakes. His feast day is March 17th. Many of his devotees celebrate him by wearing white and green and jumping into local rivers and streams. Yeah, so with that being said, let me know down in the comment section below. Have you heard of Dimbala? What do you think of him? Is he your favorite? Why or why not? And what other information can you offer down below? With that being said, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, do all that. And I'm going to see y'all next time.